Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we're watching two areas of a possible development within the Caribbean, one from 94L, the other from Disturbance 2. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin, thanks to tropicaldibits.com for Tuesday, October 15th, 2024. The black arrow is pointing towards Invest 94L, struggling to maintain thunderstorm convection, surrounded by a large area of uh, dry air in the middle of the Atlantic. And then we have a big blob of thunderstorm convection in the southern and western portions of the Caribbean, which is Disturbance 2, according to the National Hurricane Center, in purple. Here's our two vorticity signatures associated with our tropical entities. It's the spin and energy in the atmosphere. You can see they're somewhat circular in nature, so it's a matter of time before we see any of these potentially become tropical depressions or storms if they develop closed lows and winds of 30 miles per hour or more. So here's a close-up view of Invest 94L. As you can see, it's a very small convection cell uh, surrounded by a large area of dry air, so it's struggling to maintain its circulation. It's got a 30% chance of developing over the next two days and a 50% chance over the next seven days. Spaghetti track guidance models show this taking this towards the Caribbean islands, uh, especially the greater Antilles of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola. And in terms of intensity, the majority of the models keep it weak, uh, but we do have some that bring it into at least tropical storm territory within the next 48 hours to 72 hours, and one outlier uh, that says it could be a Cat 1 hurricane. And then we have Disturbance 2, which, if we were watching the GFS models last week, was rapidly intensifying this one into a major hurricane on its way towards uh, Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula. But the models have since uh, come back to reality on that one. Uh, they're more in agreement with each other. It's got a 10% chance of developing over the next two days and a 20% chance over the next seven days. Its biggest uh, hampering ability of developing will be running into Central America. So let's look at the GFS model to see if any of these systems do develop on today's model run. The black is Invest 94L, purple is Disturbance 2. Here's the upper level environment. As you can see, we have Invest 94L on the southern edge of an upper level ridge, and then Disturbance 2 is in the middle of a developing upper level ridge. So that's going to give low wind shear environments for both systems, uh, but they will both be moving into more higher wind shear environments, at least 94L will, uh, with an upper level low just to its north and west. And then we're going to be running into land with, in, with Disturbance number 2. Here's our moisture content. As you can see, 94L is surrounded by a lot of dry air, so that's hampering its development at the moment, even though it's got favorable wind shear. So two days from now, on Thursday, October 17th, we see 94L is going to be moving through a little bit more of a higher wind shear environment, so it's still not quite developing any vorticity. Disturbance 2, on the other hand, is developing more vorticity, but it's, like I said, running closer to land, so that's going to hamper any development as it interacts with Nicaragua and Honduras in Central America. Both have that upper-level ridge overhead, so that decreases the wind shear, which is favorable for in tropical development. And we see a large moisture of uh, surrounding disturbance, too, which does take a long time to consolidate, which is why we're not seeing this rapidly intensify and then the pocket of moisture associated with 94L. Three days from now on Friday, October 18th is our best chance, I think, for either system to develop as they're going to be uh, just before making any land interactions with the Caribbean islands or Central America. Because by the time we get to day five on Sunday, October 20th, both are land interacting. One, 94L with Hispaniola and Disturbance 2 with the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, and Guatemala over Central America. Now, if they weren't over land at this point, uh, good chance they could develop because they're 
uh, in the boundaries of this upper level ridge, which decreases the wind shear environment. But you can see just to their north is that subtropical jet. So 94L, any uh, further movement to the north and west will likely uh, be sheared apart and wouldn't see any development from that system. So any moisture it does have would just be whisked away. And the big blob of Central American Gyro Energy is actually, from this point on, going to be shifting into the Eastern Pacific. So like development in the Atlantic Pacific, uh, Basin would be unlikely for disturbance too, which you can see by the time we get to a week from now on Tuesday, October 22nd, 94L is completely uh, sheared apart, no longer has a circulation, and disturbance too has made its way into the Eastern Pacific Basin. Maybe it will develop into a tropical storm there. If we look at the European model for comparison, pretty much in agreement. So as you can see, the GFS has come back down to reality, had a lot of convection bias last week. Uh, and you can see they're both in agreement, too much land interaction and wind shear uh, towards the latter half of the seven days, keeping them from developing. Here's our ensemble models showing where they could go over the next seven days. So if we're going to see any development from these systems, it's likely going to be in the next 48 hours to 72 hours. And then after that, too much land interaction and wind shear will cause both systems to dissipate. And then Disturbance 2 has a second chance in the Eastern Pacific Basin. So 94L, again, will be moving through the northern portions of the Caribbean islands, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, bringing a ton of rainfall to the region. And then disturbance to the same with Central America, a ton of rainfall, even if we don't see any development. Now, if we do see development, the next theme on the list would be Nadine. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed with the breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.